This is Chris Shavako with Shavako Capital Management. With an ongoing battle taking place between inflationary and deflationary forces in both the economy and the financial markets, it is extremely important for investors to understand how the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing programs may impact their investments and, more importantly, their long-term purchasing power. When asked about quantitative easing, many financial professionals and investment advisors have adopted a boilerplate response, which typically sounds something like this. The money will just sit at the banks and thus have little impact on the financial markets. Since quantitative easing represents a threat to your wealth based on its potential adverse impact on the purchasing power of U.S. dollars, we feel this topic warrants serious attention above and beyond a shallow boilerplate analysis. We believe the common references to cash just sitting at banks may give investors a poor read on what quantitative easing is and the possible ramifications for your portfolio and the economy. The proper definition of quantitative easing should make reference to primary broker dealers, not banks. Quantitative easing involves the Fed buying treasuries from primary broker dealers using electronic money created basically out of thin air. Investment professionals who took the time to learn more about quantitative easing probably found the New York Fed's question and answers published in early 2010. The Fed stated primary dealers are eligible to sell treasuries to the Fed directly. The Fed also clearly stated dealers are encouraged to submit offers both for themselves and for their customers, which speaks directly to injecting cash into the real economy. If you are trying to make the best possible investment decisions, it is helpful to know what is actually behind the often used generic term, banks. Anyone familiar with Wall Street knows the Fed's approved primary security dealers are far from traditional banks. Just like any other business, these primary dealers have an objective of making money. All things being equal, every firm on this list would prefer to see rising asset prices as opposed to falling asset prices. As you scan the list, ask yourself, do I believe these firms will sit on large quantities of newly printed money and watch asset prices fall? When you think of a primary dealer of securities, a good analogy to understand their business is a car dealer. Car dealers maintain an inventory of cars as a normal part of their business. When a dealer takes in a trade from the general public, they may hold the car in inventory for a time before finding a buyer. Securities dealers also maintain an inventory of securities as a normal part of their business. They may buy a bond from one client, hold it for a time, and then sell it to another client. In the quantitative easing process, the Fed goes to a network of dealers in search of treasury bonds, just as we go to car dealers in search of a car. The Fed buys the bonds in a competitive bidding process between the approved bond dealers. The Fed takes a bond certificate and gives the dealer freshly printed U.S. dollars. The transactions are all done electronically, but it is still commonly referred to as printed money. If you have ever sold a bond prior to maturity, you know the bond needs to be put out for a competitive bid. Just as they were encouraged to do so by the Fed, the primary dealers can offer to sell the Fed bonds owned by their clients. In these client-dealer Fed transactions, the newly printed money moves from the Fed to the dealer to the client's brokerage account. In this case, cash moves directly into the real economy. The customers of the primary dealer can spend the money as they see fit. They can buy another bond, buy stocks, take the money to the grocery store, or simply keep the cash. If you have checked CD and money market rates lately, you know cash is earning next to nothing. So investors are motivated to find alternative stores of value. 
which is a politically correct way of saying they're motivated to spend or invest their cash. In the case where the Fed buys bonds held in the primary dealer's existing inventory, the newly printed cash is moved from the Fed to the account of the primary dealer. The primary dealer, like their clients, can use the newly created cash as they see fit. They can loan the money to their clients. They can use the funds to buy stocks or bonds, acting as a securities dealer. They can invest the cash in stocks, bonds, commodities, precious metals, or currencies via their proprietary trading units. Since there are many unknowns and many moving parts, we suggest you listen with skepticism to anyone who claims to know the long-term impacts of the Fed's quantitative easing programs on both the financial markets and the economy. Our job is to understand the quantitative easing process and monitor and assess the market's reaction to details as they are released by the Federal Reserve. We must be willing to make both inflationary and deflationary adjustments based on market internals and economic data. Adopting an QE will work approach or QE won't work approach in advance would be a disservice to our clients. Flexibility is always important in the markets, but maybe more so when it comes to the possible long-term impacts of quantitative easing. This video is part of a six-part series of videos on quantitative easing. You can access all six videos via the QE videos link on our homepage. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. At Shivaco Capital Management, we wish you nothing but success with your personal, professional, and market endeavors in the months ahead. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice and Shivaco Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decisions.